you have to bear with me a little bit in that the words are really small in this Bible. <laughs> and I'll be reading from it, so you think. During the week, and I think from last week, I was talking to Pastor Bob about being able to help and fill in from time to time. I was supposed to come and give the sermon this week and last week. <laughs> but how to be spontaneous and meaningful? Anybody can make a response, but to make a meaningful response kind of focuses around the topic today of charity. Now, charity has 156 synonyms. Anything dealing with kindness, consideration, politeness, manners, a number of things. But all of them are aspects of charity. And charity is an aspect of love, which is an all-encompassing word for anything good and righteous. But Jesus speaks very specifically about charity in an uplifting, but sometimes in a diminishing way that we might be arrogant about being charitable. So we'll begin <clears throat> with Corinthians 12, 4. Now there, is, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with that. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word knowledge, and by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, discerning of spirits, and to another, the diverse kinds of tongues, to another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these work that one <clears throat> and the same self-same Spirit, dividing to every every man severally as to his will. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized <clears throat> into the body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free, and have been all made to drink into the same one spirit. Then I'll move to Corinthians 25, 12, 25. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. And whether one member suffer, all members suffer. Whether one member to be honored, all members rejoice with it. Now we are all one body of Christ, and members in particular, and God hath set some of in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts, then healings and helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are we all apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Are we all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing to all speak, to all tongues, to all interpret. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you unto you, it is a more excellent way. We move briefly into chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I have become as a sounding brass, or a tinkling of cymbals, and all, 
although I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can reprove, uh, remove, so that it might remove mountains <clears throat> and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all the gifts, I said all the goods, to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me not. Charity suffereth long and kind. Charity suffereth not, or envieth not. <clears throat> Charity vaunteth not, and be not puffed up. And the final one. And now addeth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of them is charity. So upon that, We all have uh, different impressions of what charity is, and probably the most common internal scene is someone offering a coin or something to a beggar, or a coat to a homeless person, something of that nature. But it's a thing. The thing is offered, but it's all being offered from something else, from mind, heart, and spirit. So charity is giving. And to consider a moment <clears throat> that uh, Jesus would say that of all these great attributes, I am nothing without charity. And we think about all the graces that God has given us. In a sense, you could say he has been charitable to us. Simple things. Hold your breath for three minutes and see if you are grateful to breathe once more. Okay? It's a charity. Or you can go, it's the, the rule of threes. Man can't really survive well without air for three minutes, water for three days, food for three weeks. So we have a lot to be grateful for. There are other words that we need to deal with also in our daily lives. <clears throat> when we offer consideration, when we consider something, we're offering what? We're offering time of ourselves to think and dwell, compare and evaluate. It's a moment to offer, and when we're inconsiderate, we're not offering anything. We're ignoring the ability to share, to love, to take that moment, because we haven't taken time. We're, we're actually being very selfish with our small amount of time to hesitate. Think about what you're going to be saying or doing. Is it right in the moment? Is it from your heart? And sometimes I get responses to that kind of question. Well, people need to know the truth. <laughs> well, <clears throat> you're all aware my wife is overweight. <laughs> there are a lot of ways to express that, but there's time and place and manner. For me to say, Annie, you're fat. <laughs> you know, if I'm lucky to get away with a punch in the mouth, uh, we know that that was incorrect. It was not taking the time to consider, although it be fact, although it be truth, is it timely? Is it proper? It might be considered as just a basic observation, medical reality. But we have discernment of spirit. And if we don't discern the right spirit in our heart coming out, all kinds of bad things can happen. So charity, along with that consideration, to take a moment to consider when you offer undivided attention. You know, a, a real catchword in today's society is multitasking. I watched a video on YouTube about uh, psychologists talking about multitasking, and in fact, there is no such thing. It's a 
quick moment of priorities, jumping back and forth between priorities, multiplying priorities for momentary consideration. Again, we have the word consideration. And when it happens fast, there's no time to consider. So if you're driving a car and you're texting, you're not being considerate. You're not considering the possibilities or reactions of other people. Uh, it's, it's actually, in, in a way, not only is it dangerous, it's a really selfish thing. My time is more important than my safety. My time is more important than your safety. So we need to be able to apply undivided attention so you try to pick up too many things at once and you end up dropping something. It wasn't your original intent. But had you thought of them and just got a plastic bag, you put things in the bag and carry it all nicely, right? And there was the word careful. And then, Please be careful. Well, what's it mean? To take a moment of undivided attention to consider being full of care. You're, you're thinking about the moment. You're being careful. If you're going mountain climbing, you have to be really careful, right? So what are you considering? You're considering your rope, your balance, gravity, a number of things, but they require your undivided attention where really drastic things can happen. So you're being charitable not just with yourself, but with others when you consider. Manners are, are another expression of this. And I, I mentioned before that there's, I looked it up. When you look up the word charity, there's 156 synonyms to charity, which are just being good, you know, being polite. Now, manners, uh, you know, in the South here, manners are very important. It's been a part of the culture for a long, long time. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And uh, the word manner really, uh, relates to a relationship based on a structure. Right? You have a lot of priorities of structure, social structure, intelligence structure, authoritative structure. And to be polite, actually, I looked and I started searching the word polite, it comes from Greek polit or polite. And it means to polish or to make smooth. And that's what manners do, do. You know, that you think about it in the course of our daily expressions towards each other, to be polite, to show manner, consider, oh, is this person a little bit older than me? Do they have more skill, more experience, uh, more knowledge? Then why shouldn't I say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am? It, it costs me nothing. And I find myself really deficient in that. Uh, I grew up in a military family, basically, and there it's more of a customary requirement. It's not a social virtue. Uh, someone outranks you, you say, yes, sir, no, sir, no excuse, sir. Apart from that, there's a common phrase also, um, rank in public, name in private. So last week, <clears throat> we had a gentleman come to uh, check out the church and renting space for it. And I was standing next to Bob, I'm doing, putting something in the trash or something, I was going to ask Pastor Bob a question. And I thought, well, this gentleman doesn't know Pastor Bob as Bob. I know Bob as a friend, a mentor, as our pastor. So I can get away and say, hey, Bob, you want to do this, or hey, Bob, can I do that? But in front of someone who doesn't know us as an organization, as a church, as a fellowship, it's rightful and proper to use the title. Pastor Bob, should I put this out? I was talking about the rank for uh, the Riddicks, and you know, they come in after church service. And, <clears throat> and uh, so I was implementing that moment of consideration, manner, politeness and addressing Bob by title. And it, it reminded me how many times I didn't do that for others. That we really aren't always very charitable with each other. We take each other for granted. 
So being polite is a nice way of saying, I'm not taking you for granted, I'm going to respect you. So now comes a Mark story. We do things spontaneously that sometimes are really, really beautiful, really nice, really meaningful. At one point uh, in my church career, I was driving Reverend Moon and Mrs. Moon <clears throat> around New York City. And uh, with that, of course, we have a security team which I was on, and uh, we pull up in front of the New Yorker Hotel. Uh, Reverend Moon and Mrs. Moon are having a conference or a meeting of some nature with international leaders. And uh, I'm sitting there on the curb waiting for the detail to make its way in, into, the, uh, into the building. And there's this young lady across the sidewalk, away from the car, just leaning against the building, you know, how people lean, they'll lean back with their leg up, you know, just kind of watching stuff. And she was looking at the car and looking at us along the side. <clears throat> and she didn't have a happy face. It was kind of a negatively analytical kind of. And I'm thinking, well, that's sad. <laughs> Uh, in the course of driving uh, Reverend Moon and Mrs. Moon down to New York, they had had some little celebration at their house and they had a fruit basket. So as we were driving, they were eating some of the fruit and passing it out to me and uh, another security member. And I got an orange. An apple would have been nice. An apple you can work with when you're driving. An orange you can't work with when you're driving. So I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at this young woman, and I'm thinking, she needs something. She needs somebody to do something nice. So the woman comes down and says, hey, excuse me. Uh, we have a basket of fruit in here, and it's just too much for us. Can I give you an orange? And it was like she got hit with a bolt of lightning. She couldn't believe that I, this big macho driver guy, you know, in the big car, was even addressing anything outside of looking for hostile invaders. So she wanted some word, and I gave her the orange. I said, you know, it's a beautiful day. And, uh, Hope it gets better for you. And she kind of smiled and had the orange. <clears throat> and she walked away. I met her about two years later at one of the different gatherings we often have. And uh, she said, That orange saved my life. She says, I was so shocked being addressed by one of you guys. Because security teams are not known for their friendliness. Mm -hmm. Everything is a threat. You trust nothing. Appearances have no value whatsoever. Because in the momentary blink of an eye, an act can change everything to devastation. So you, you just can't take chances. It's not that you don't like people. It's not that you are suspicious of everyone, although you are. It's a, it's a mission to, in the worst possible circumstance, to preserve life, even at the cost of your own. So when I hear <clears throat> that orange, it blew a bunch of concepts right out of the water. Here's this rich, you know, car person, and he's got his driver and this thing and that thing, and. I'm struggling for peanut butter sandwiches and, and uh, having a miserable life and nobody understands me, nobody loves me. So when I gave her that orange, it, it broke all that wide open. It said, what you're thinking is just not true. And you need to reconsider values in your life. 
So from her perspective, and the reason she said it saved her life, is she said, I put that orange up on my dresser, and over the course of time, it just shrank down to like a walnut. And then, well, I'm okay. She says, but each time I looked at it, I reminded myself that things are not always as they appear, and that I should be more patient, that I should find out what is real, what is true, and not just make a surface opinion. So in a sense, she was saying that uh, she had a lesson of charity. Someone took a uh, moment to consider the manner, the situation, what possibility I might have if I'm going to recognize it. How do I take dominion of the moment in a good way? If I'm going to address her and try to break through her difficulty, then I become responsibility, responsible to be part of the solution, not add on to the problem. So by being charitable, I'm offering an expression of love. And in that, she was able to pass that onward, pass that forward. So we never really know where our small gestures go, how far those ripples last and how important they are in that moment. So let's think of, them. Think of our moments with charity, with love. Join me in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Assembly Parent, God of all things, the Alpha and Omega, by which we exist, by which we have future, by which we have eternal life. We pray, Heavenly Parent, that we can forever be grateful <coughs> that we exist and those around us also are here for our education, for our support, for the opportunities to give and receive. We want to apply truth and beauty and wisdom in our lives. And we thank you that we've had such prominent teachers in history. We have Jesus. We have our pastors around us. We have our prophets, saints, and guides. We want to always be able to appreciate those who are in a true parent position. The position of absolute, unconditional love. We offer ourselves to you, our day to you, all things to you, upholding the names of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and all who attend him, all of us who represent him, and also follow our mentors, such as Reverend Moon, and our local pastors. Thank you for being with us always. Now with us, in the name of our Lord, amen. Amen.